Well, good evening, everybody. It's so good to be back here in Australia. And um, thank yeah. you so much for inviting me to come back. And um, and thank you so much for choosing um, Genocide uh, Zrin 1943. It means so much to me. And tonight, um, I would just like to say a special hello to all the descendants of Zrin and of Zrinyani. We have few tonight. Can you just stand up for a sec so we can see you? Come on, stand up. Descendants. My brother, my daughter's there. Look, we're all here. So, we are very fortunate to be here tonight. We are, Branka. Um, I did want to just uh, ease into this, but you you dive straight in. So good, good for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, there is some slides showing from, from the film, but um, look, many of us grew up with stories from our, our parents and, and family, extended family, about, um, you know, about life in Croatia. And, and I think for me it's created curiosity and, and a connection in a way. Um, however, you know, few of us return to Croatia and actually embark on such projects as you have. Um, and in particular, advancing the promotion of Zrin. Um, I'm just, I'd be grateful if you could share with us how you became involved in this documentary um, and, uh, and why it's an important project for you especially. Well, I've been, I have, I've returned back to Croatia nine years ago and um, I have found peace in my soul, so to speak. That's the best way to describe it. Maybe it's not for everybody, but for me, Croatia is home and my soul is at peace. Um, Zrin, it wasn't until 2019 that I went to Zrin for the first time and that was the pilgrimage. The reason why my father always told us that, you know, you can't go back, there's nothing there. And he was right. In 1943, Zrin was burned to the ground. It, the inhabitants of Zrin were 850 people. Most of the men over the age of 18 were killed, slaughtered. Only the children and women, I would say one third of the film of the, of the, of the generation was survived. And then they were moved to Drenje near um, Jakovo. To go back, to Zrin, it was the first time I think that we, as as a group of uh, Zrinyani, would return back was um, after the uh, Operation Storm. That was the end of the home uh, war. So, and that was the pilgrimage, and that was my pilgrimage the first time that I actually came to Zrin. I um, and also people who don't know where Zrin is, it's in part of uh, Barnovina. And Nikola Shubic Zrinsky and the Zrinsky family were, have been um, living in Zrin for the last, you know, for 300 years. And uh, the Shubiches gave themselves the name Zrinsky after the name of Zrin. And next year we've got 730th anniversary of since Zrin was actually first time put on a map. Hope to see you there. Um, to, we've started, um, after 80 years, I am the first Catholic parishioner of Zrin. So we're very, very proud. In 1946, thank you. In 1946, um, the Yugoslav communist government has confiscated every piece of the land that Zrinjani possessed. Not only in Zrin, but in Delhi, in Zagreb, Sisak, anywhere else in anywhere else in the form, you know, the former Yugoslavia, they have confiscated everything that they owned. And after that, there was a de decree that came through and they said um, in the courts, it still remains unfortunately, sadly today, that not one of the Zrinjani or descendants of Zrin are allowed to come back. So that was very, very hard for most of us um, who are the descendants of Zrin. I've decided in 2020 to start buying back the land that was confiscated by the Communism Party or the Yugoslav government um, from the Serbs, 
the land was given to the local Serbs who live in the area. So I'm buying back anything that they want to sell. And I'm so proud to say there are five of Croats not living. I'm the only one that lives in Zadin and Zagreb. Uh, Valerie, last year, where are you, Valerie? Valerie Skender, she's a Brajcinovic. Last year bought about 20,000 square metres of land. And um, we will be... Going on. Yeah, go? yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I was no 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 it's it's okay. I know I to give people a bit of an information. I love it. I, I love your passion and um I want to bring it back to the to the documentary and the the writer and the and the director, um, Nada Prakachin. How did you meet her and what what is it you you've spoken a fair bit about the history of Zrin. But and and its downfall. But um, you know she documents a, a lot of uh, information. But talk to us about the film and and how it kind of reflects what's the journey of Zrin. Uh, Nada Perkacin is a fantastic. Um, uh, she was first of all uh, a, a journalist. Yeah. Uh, during the war, and Nada's uh, got a big passion of writing about the truth about what has happened in the communist times and the Han War. So. Um, I've started also um, investigating and um, I've started to do my own family tree and doing my own family tree to see how far we can go, where are the homes that have been burnt to the ground because it was burnt to the ground. Is, and is, was confiscated. So is, is this started, part of the documentary as well? part of the okay. documentary yeah. as well. And um, the truth has to come out hmm. and slowly the truth is coming out going through all the documents. So I've got a Bible, we call it the Bible here. This is uh, the family tree of Zrin, the whole Zrin, over 3,000 names that we have so far have made. So, you know, talking to Nada, this is what we've got. We have made a lot of research. She has made a lot of research with the historians. Um, so with, with, sorry, just to interrupt there, with the actual, with the film though, how much of it, um, you know, was was there a, a, your part in the film as well? How do you, how, what's your connection to it? Is it through Nada? Well, through Nada, of course. Okay. Um, you know, she's uh, she's the producer. Yeah. Um, we've um, she's interviewed a lot of the descendants of Zrin, Zrinjani, and the Zrinjani people who are still alive. And um, this was Zrin actually before 1943, before it was burned down, and the other part. They used to say that the the, the cat can jump from a roof to roof. <laughs> So when you come to Zrin today, there's only about, I don't know, about 10 houses that are still yeah. standing. <laughs> and and tell us what, um, just before we move to the trailer, I'm just keen, to, what what should we look out for when we watch the documentary and we see the film? What What's the main takeout from that and what should we, we be aware of? Um, uh, going through all the documents, we went through the Partizan documents. Uh, the Partizan have actually, they were very, very good at uh, writing every detail of what was going on. Uh, Zrin was an example to everybody else who didn't want to join the partisan movement. So this is what they said. Zrin was attacked 32 times and um, they didn't want to join the partisan movement or there wasn't the Ustasha movement either. These were the people who just wanted to live peacefully in their own So it, it, we really go through that story yeah. and, some, and some stories there.